Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Amanda and I'm currently a first year vet student at the Ontario Veterinary College. Flashback to this time last year and I was panic prepping for my interview at OVC. I really didn't have an idea of where I wanted to start, so I went on YouTube and I looked up how to get 100% on my vet school interview so that I get into vet school. Go figure, there was literally no videos that were titled that, um, but there was actually very few videos talking about the vet school interview process in general, and I found that there wasn't a lot of resources that helped me in my preparation. So that's where this video comes in. I made a list of things that I feel like were really beneficial in my preparation, um, and some of the things that I did in my preparation that I feel like helped me perform really well the day of my interview. Now, disclaimer, I do know that given the current environment right now, the application process for OVC has changed from an MMI format interview to a CASPER test and then an online interview with two interviewers. However, the good news is, is that based on the research that I've done, the CASPER test and an MMI are going to assess very similar things. So on the CASPER website, it talks about how this CASPER test is a situational judgment test and that you're gonna be given realistic but hypothetical scenarios that are going to ask you how you're gonna deal with the scenario and what your decision-making process is like. Good news is that an MMI is very similar to this. The only difference is that an MMI, you're gonna give a verbal answer and you're gonna explain yourself that way, whereas CASPER is gonna be a written test, so you'll just type out your answers instead. When you're prepping for your CASPER test or your MMI, Keep in mind that both tests are going to assess qualities such as your ethical decision-making skills, your communication skills, empathy, and things like collaboration and resilience. So whether you're prepping for the CASPER test or your MMI, your prepping is going to be very similar because both of these tests are going to assess similar things. So now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's jump right into some of the tips I have for you. So for me, one of the most beneficial things that I did in my prepping was to make a list of stakeholders that are relevant to the veterinary profession. Some of those stakeholders included the client, your patient, the veterinary profession as a whole, your friends, your family, yourself as a vet, and then also the legal aspect that comes along with being a professional in the industry. So the day of my interview when I was reading a scenario or when I was presented with a situation, there was three or four stakeholders that kind of jumped out at me that I knew were going to be relevant to the scenario that I needed to discuss in my answer. Having this list in the back of my head really kind of eased the pressure the day of and it was one less thing I had to think about because I had already made a list of all these stakeholders and I kind of knew how they were relevant to certain situations. Okay, now let's talk about how you're going to structure your answers. For me, I found it super beneficial to have a structure or a format for all of my answers that I could apply no matter what situation I was given. So for me, the thing that I found worked best was to answer in an essay style format. What I mean by this is that I would have an introduction and then I would have a couple body paragraphs where I would talk about the impact on the stakeholders that I previously mentioned. And then I would have a conclusion to kind of summarize my answer. By practicing ahead of time, I developed an introduction and a conclusion that I could apply to pretty much any scenario. And that intro and conclusion really didn't differ when I went from station to station. I used pretty much the exact same intro and the same conclusion every single time. So for the introduction, I would use one to two sentences to describe my role in the scenario and then briefly touch on the stakeholders that I thought were gonna be impacted by my decision-making process. Once I had listed three or four stakeholders, that's when I would go into my body paragraphs and I would talk about all of the decision-making processes that could potentially affect these stakeholders and the different outcomes that could happen based on my decision-making. Once I had talked about all the stakeholders and all of the potential options for decision-making processes, then I would jump to my conclusion and I would kind of briefly summarize what I had just talked about that way you're clarifying for the interviewers if they missed anything. And I would always make sure that I summarized and stated what my decision was. Whether you come to a decision or not, it's important to kind of finalize your thoughts. So for me, if I wasn't sure how to proceed in a situation, I would state that and I would say, even though I'm not sure how to proceed in this situation, I'm going to reach out to other professionals and get their opinion, or I'm gonna do more research so that I can make an educated decision. 
However, if I knew how I was going to proceed, I would just briefly say that even though I have looked at all the other options and I've taken into consideration all of the people that are involved in the situation, this is how I'm going to go forward with my decision. So now that you have a structure on how to answer different scenario questions, it's important to practice this so that it's second nature day of and you don't have to think about the structure, you can just go straight into your answer. There are a couple resources that I would recommend to help you with the actual answer part of the questions. One of these resources is a book called The Introduction to Veterinary Medical Ethics by Roland. This book is pretty much just a massive book of different veterinary scenarios that talk about important ethical decision making that comes along with being a veterinarian and Roland goes into his answers and why he would continue with that decision making process, what he thought about when making the decision making process, and he actually talks about a lot of stakeholders that I had never even thought of before. This book was really helpful when I was coming up with my own answers because even though there were some ethical things that I had different stances on, I felt like the way he answered his questions and the different points of view that he brought up were really helpful when I came to structuring my answers. The other thing that I would recommend would be to read position statements put out by veterinary regulatory bodies where you live. So for me, the OVMA and the CVMA both have position statements on different ethical issues in veterinary medicine and they state their perspectives ethically on those scenarios. By understanding what my beliefs and my values were based on these position statements, it allowed me to touch on things that I wasn't really knowledgeable about before. Okay, and my last piece of advice for this video is one that I think is kind of controversial, but ignore everything I just said. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I got a lot of advice going into my interview on how to prep and a lot of people told me, you know, you can't prep enough, there's no such thing as too much practice, and I would actually disagree with that. I started my preparation by practicing scenarios every single day and I found out very quickly that my answers were starting to get worse and worse. It almost seemed robotic and they seemed like they weren't natural and that's when I knew I needed to stop prepping scenarios and work on things that I was weak to. So I found two things that I thought were big weaknesses for me and were gonna come out the day of my interview. And that was that I talk extremely fast when I'm nervous and I didn't really have a good idea of how I wanted to structure my answer if it didn't follow that format I talked about. Obviously your weaknesses may differ this year given that the format is changed, but I would encourage you to sit down before you start any preparation and figure out where your strengths lie and where your weaknesses are. That way you can target your preparation to what you think is gonna be most beneficial to you. It's so important to remember that every single person applying to vet school has different strengths and weaknesses. So what worked for one person may not work for someone else. There's no set formula that if you do X and Y, you're gonna get into vet school. And I think that's so important for you to remember because Tailoring your preparation to what is going to benefit you most is what's going to make you successful, not following a list of things that someone else did. So if you get absolutely anything out of this video, I hope you take away that you need to tailor your preparation for what is going to benefit you most. And if you feel like what I said in this video is not going to help you at all, then don't do it. Do something that's going to make you successful the day of your interview. But I do hope that you got something out of this video, even if it is just a place to start. If you have any questions or anything else you want to ask or are curious about, please leave your comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. I did sign an NDA that I can't talk about the actual scenarios I was given, but anything else I can talk about, feel free to ask those questions. And I wish you guys the absolute best of luck on your interview and with your preparation. Getting an interview to vet school is a huge accomplishment in itself. So congratulations to you guys. Be confident in the fact that you deserve this spot and this is something that you're going to be prepared for. I wish you guys the best of luck and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.